to, uh, again, drive very aggressively and flirt with some of these other drivers, especially as she encounters those brake lights here. So something tells me we may be looking for a possible opportunity to get off the freeway, but for the time being, she's hugging that number one lane. So still committed to the eastbound 60 freeway, guys. Yeah, we first heard this in the East LA area. She was near Whittier and Lorena Street. Uh, so this was a surface street pursuit at first, and for some reason, she ended up on the freeway, which was always uh, a, a, a big risk at this time of the day on any normal rush hour. Uh, this is obviously not a normal rush hour, but still, as I said, surprising that she's even able to maintain these speeds, even at 45 miles per hour, she's doing better than most other Angelinos this evening. I should say that all of this traffic that we're looking at here is going to come into play if this comes to a stop on the freeway. If she does encounter some standstill traffic and has nowhere to go, if she boxes herself in somehow, that's really going to pose a challenge for those pursuing officers. So we will see how much longer they maintain this pursuit if they decide to hand this off to CHP or if they decide to pull back altogether. But right now, they have only fallen back a little bit, still in pursuit mode, as she now navigates off of the 60 freeway. It looks like she's taking the exit here, uh, and that is going to put her on, uh, no, still on the 60? Still, 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 so she's getting on the 605. Transitioning now from the 60 onto the northbound 605 on a two-lane transition ramp here. And if we could widen out just a smidge, we'll see how far behind LAPD is here or if they have fallen way back, if they were able to make that exit with her. I do not see any flashing lights behind her, but that helicopter is overhead. So LAPD now tracking this uh, female Grand Theft Auto suspect from the air, letting those ground units pull back quite a bit. And again, it was always going to be uh, a risky business on the freeway with all of this traffic. So safer to have the helicopter track her movements and meet up with this person once they do come to a spot, preferably off the freeway. Yeah, north, northbound 605 here, just north of the 60 freeway. I uh, should uh, correct myself. It's actually L.A. County Sheriff. The uh, sheriff's helicopter has taken over this pursuit. They are, again, in tracking mode. That is the night sun that you see right there. And even on the 605 freeway, you still see only moderate traffic. It's not nearly as heavy as it was 5 to 10 miles west of here, closer to downtown. The further away we get from downtown, the more it seems to be moving. Northbound 605, I would say she's about maxing out at 50 miles per hour. Again, heavily tinted windows on that stolen truck. We can't really get a good glimpse inside the vehicle, uh, but needless to say, just very, very aggressive and erratic driving so far. Right, only that one uh, that one contact, that one minor collision that we saw when we first came on the air with this. She's now approaching the 10 freeway uh, in uh, the El Monte area here. So we'll see if she sticks with the 605 or takes a chance with the 10 freeway. Out here, it's doing much better again than it is in the East Alley Interchange. Traffic seems to be moving, uh, you know, at a, uh, I wouldn't say a snail's pace, it seems to be moving, you know, moderately at about 45 to 50 miles per hour, and she's able to find those gaps and uh, weave through here. But I, I still think, uh, unless she has a clear destination in mind, something tells me she'll be looking at some point to get off the freeway, but she's still holding on to that carpool lane, so she has to make her way all the way over to the right if she's gonna get off the freeway, especially if she's gonna take the, the 10 freeway, which is just about a mile ahead of her. Coming up on the 10 now, and she's bypassing the 10. It looks like, uh, from my vantage point, it appears she's going to stick with the 6, 60, 605 freeway. Committed to the 605 freeway, and that carpool lane 
is moving a little bit quicker than the rest of the main lanes there. You can see the traffic next to her is much slower, but that carpool lane is doing okay, and that is uh, allowing her some room to play with here. Again, law enforcement falling back here, but the LA uh, Sheriff's Department maintaining a solid visual from their helicopter, and we'll see if they're able to get units into position here when she gets off the freeway, or the other possibility is maybe California Highway Patrol out here in the San Gabriel Valley decides to engage with this suspect. Right now, the only charge that we are aware of is uh, Grand Theft Auto. This is apparently a stolen vehicle. If there are any other crimes associated with this pursuit, uh, we are not aware at this point. So depending on the severity of the charges here, that will also play a big part into the decision as to how far they want to take this. But with uh, the helicopter at their disposal, of course, they could take it quite a distance if she does eventually uh, get off the freeway here in L.A. County. It's just wild. It's, 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 it's just incredible to me. I mean, I, I, we were just showing you the traffic downtown uh, not more than 15 minutes ago, and every freeway out here was bumper to bumper. But as she's made her way out here, she has managed to find a wide open 605 freeway. In fact, north of the 10, you can see now she's got the whole freeway to play with, doing upwards of 80 miles per hour. So she's doubled her speed here just in the last 30 seconds. And her next major interchange is going to be the 210 freeway. But as long as the freeway is wide open for her, uh, why not stay on it? Again, unless she has a clear destination in mind, we don't know where she resides, where this pursuit originated from. We know they picked it up in East L.A., but we don't know where this suspect intends to go. So as long as she's here on the 605, coming up on the 210 freeway here in the next few minutes, as I look out off the nose here, she pretty much has the 605 all to herself. As she gets closer to the 210, it does jam up slightly, but now you see her making her way over to the right lane, getting ready for a possible exit, but uh, no signal yet. So we'll see if she does get off the freeway here. Yeah, right now, just the helicopter. LAPD basically waving their hands. They have basically pulled way back. They're out of their jurisdiction. They've gone back to Hollenbeck, and now you have LA County Sheriff basically tracking this truck from above. Again, California Highway Patrol, uh, they're going to be a little more aggressive. They have been lately, but they may or may not take the opportunity to adopt this pursuit if they are you know, if they're if they're if they're not too busy, they will send units out here. If they're preoccupied, then they may let this one go. But right now, LA County Sheriff tracking their movements as she continues up towards the uh, Azusa area. We'll see if maybe they start alerting some of the other jurisdictions along the 210 freeway. But right now, still pushing about 70 miles per hour here on the 605 freeway, getting closer and closer to that 210. There'll be a little more volume there, but again, overall, she still has plenty of freeway to play with. Sorry, guys, I lost you for just a bit there. I'm not sure if you can hear me, but we'll continue here as she continues northbound on the 605 freeway, hugging that number four lane there at about 70 miles per hour, refusing to pull over for LAPD. Now she has much less pressure on her, but everybody is well aware that something is going on with that bright night sun shining a light on this stolen pickup truck. It's a red stolen truck. Not sure where it was stolen from, what other crimes may be associated here, but believed to be a female driver who once again is desperate enough to use that shoulder uh, if she sees uh, an opportunity. If she has any kind of traffic whatsoever, she gets right over to the shoulder and uh, is, is, is showing limited competence behind the wheel here, but still managing to keep up her speed.
That's right. There's no word on whether there's anybody else inside that truck, but it does sound like California Highway Patrol is now going to take over this pursuit. So we should see uh, CHP units pull into position behind her here any, mi any minute. It may take a couple minutes to get out here, but still, she's getting much closer to the 210 here, so we'll see what happens. Yep. Copy. Westbound 210. So we're back over the 210 freeway. If you're joining us live on ABC7.com and our 24-7 streaming channels, Chris Christie up in Air 7 HD as we continue our coverage of this GTA suspect who was refusing to pull over LAPD, chasing the suspect out of the city into LA County's jurisdiction. They sheriff's helicopter overhead here as California Highway Patrol now attempts to get onto the 210 freeway here and try and pull her over. She's now uh, transitioned onto the westbound 210 freeway heading back towards Pasadena, back towards the metro area where traffic is going to bunch up on her the further west she gets. Now, right now, the eastbound or the westbound side is actually the faster side of the 210 freeway. The eastbound side is all jammed up with folks trying to get home on a Thursday night. Westbound traffic is a little bit better, but again, that's gonna change once she gets closer to the 710 here. So that red stolen pickup truck with a female driver behind the wheel, unclear whether anybody else is inside the truck with her, but she is continuing to drive very aggressively. Now over the Gore Point at an exit here. This is gonna be Central Avenue. She's getting off of the 210 freeway, off of the freeway, and this will put her uh, potentially onto Central. Westbound off of the 210 freeway, now on Central Avenue, paralleling the freeway here with, uh, ooh, she had the green light there, but didn't even bother to slow down. Picked up a little air, a little dip in the road there, and now you can see she is uh, coming up on uh, some more intersections here. So we'll see if she shows any attempt whatsoever at slowing down for these, or if she starts blowing through red lights, that is going to attract the attention of law enforcement much faster. This is Shamrock Avenue as she pauses there slightly to make a left turn. A left turn now under the 210 freeway southbound on Shamrock Avenue. Under the 210, she's going to dump the vehicle. She's going to dump the vehicle under the 210. She's under the freeway. Under the freeway and the vehicle. Is that it? That's not it. That is, that's, that's not it. Okay. Yep, yep, one of the oldest tricks in the book, Colleen, pulled up under the freeway. Now you see her peeking out the other side of the freeway at a snail's pace, and she did not dump the vehicle. She's still in the vehicle, deciding it looks like that she wants to get back on the freeway. This time, she's potentially going to get back onto the eastbound side of the 210 freeway. Colleen, I thought almost for sure she was going to dump the vehicle. You know how often we see that happen. No, we haven't seen any flashing lights in quite a while. Again, LAPD did have a couple of units dedicated to this pursuit when we first picked it up off the top, but uh, they have since pulled back completely. LA County Sheriff doing a bulk of the work here until CHP can get into position. They are tracking this from above. They are probably almost guaranteed watching our stream right now. And so they are attempting to get into position here uh, any minute. I think we will start to see some CHP units eventually. It's just a matter of those guys working their way through traffic as well. Coming up on the entrance ramp there, uh, entrance ramp now getting back on to the 10, 210 freeway. 
and this will put her uh, onto the eastbound side, Colleen. Yeah, it's, it's surprising to say the least, especially on a, uh, a night like tonight. You know, we're on the eve of a very busy travel day tomorrow. I could tell you that tonight has seen more traffic than we have seen all week since that fire happened on the 10 freeway. And as a result, all of the surrounding freeways have been bumper to bumper as far as the eye could see tonight. And now she is joining the rest of those folks leaving downtown LA heading home through Pasadena, through the uh, through the San Gabriel Valley on the 210 freeway. Now over the Gore Point, back on the 605, taking the 605 southbound. So starting to re retrace some of her steps here uh, because traffic was just going to slow down on her. She was really going to be uh, bumper to bumper in just another quarter mile because of all that get home traffic. So now decided to get onto the 605 freeway, a clear indication that she may be making this up on the fly here. I just don't get the feeling that she has uh, uh, a clear idea on, on where she wants to take this. In any event though, CHP has now pulled into position from above. We do have a CHP helicopter entering the picture here. LA County Sheriff still right overhead uh, providing that night sun and we'll start to look for more of those ground units here again in the next couple of minutes. It takes time to triangulate those units through all that busy traffic to get them into the area. So we'll see if they pop up behind her here in just a minute and we'll see what the driving looks like over the next several miles if she slows down at all, if she acts more agitated, less agitated, or if she hits anybody else. Again, to recap, we've already seen one minor collision that we're aware of early on in this pursuit. She basically ran up against somebody's fender bender, another uh, pickup truck actually that she slid into, and now she has uh, slowed down a little bit, basically going with the flow of traffic here on the 605. No, we don't know. We really don't know uh, a, a lot other than the fact that this is a stolen vehicle, but something tells me there's more to it. However, we're still only seeing limited resources dedicated to this pursuit, so we already know that LAPD was uh, fine enough just letting it go, handing it off to, to the LA County Sheriff's Department, so it wasn't serious enough for LAPD to continue it out of their jurisdiction, uh, but still, uh, we'll see uh, here comes that CHP unit. Here comes that CHP unit, the first primary unit to join the pursuit here since uh, we have uh, hit the bottom of the hour here. And now she'll have a little bit of pressure coming up from her rear left flank. There is California Highway Patrol with the lights and sirens on. Code 3 back in pursuit mode as that uh, unit. Ooh, look at that. They've turned the lights off. They've turned the lights off, so this is not a pursuit technically, but they are now following the suspect with the lights and sirens off. No longer code three, this is now firmly in tracking mode, but they're gonna continue to track as to not agitate her further. I think the driving was slowing down to a comfortable speed that they don't want to spook her too much. Right now, if she gets off the freeway, they can safely follow from a distance and eventually execute a felony stop if they can get units into position here. But she has now exited the freeway at Lower Azusa Road, just off of the 605, 
the sheriff to, or uh, the CHP helicopter now providing the light from above. One unit right behind her. They will almost certainly call for backup before they light her up again. But right now, it does look like the driving is slowing down ever so slightly here. The composure is a little bit, uh, a, a little bit better behaved. You can see she's not really uh, attempting some of those wackier moves that she was earlier on, where she was just weaving across all lanes and uh, just uh, driving very erratically. Now it looks like she's uh, just a little bit more uh, under control here. So we'll see uh, how close that primary unit gets. He's about maybe uh, a couple hundred feet back, I would say, still continuing. Uh, that was a red light, I think, that she just ran, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we have to re-rack that. It looked like a red light that she ran. That CHP unit made the made it as well. He actually uh, ran it, I think, unless it had just turned green. I'm really not sure, but it looked like it was red by my eye. And now it looks like maybe she's attempting to get off of Lower Azusa Road in that turn lane. No, she's just using the, oh, go the wrong way, go the wrong way on Lower Azusa Road. So she's just going around this traffic using that median, going the opposite direction over the double yellow lines uh, where there is now a little bit of traffic ahead of her on Lower Azusa Road. Once again, you see her pushing the pedal to the metal on the oncoming lanes of traffic. That is certainly going to attract the attention of CHP as they try and get more units in position. Yeah, we can't really tell. Uh, I mean, it does look like it's not necessarily a work truck. There is uh, some uh, some stuff in the back. I, 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 I saw a, a spare wheel and maybe some other tools, maybe a cooler as well. So it was hard to tell, but there are several items in the back there that she's hauling off of Peck Road, now onto surface streets here, again off of Peck, now coming up on... Uh, on, Mul uh, on Peck Road off of Mulhall. So she did a little circle there. CHP lighting her up now, and I expect that they'll pull up much closer uh, on her, close up behind her, because now that she's really ramped things up, especially once she went into the, those oncoming lanes of traffic, it really uh, it makes it all the more uh, urgent for them to get her off the road. So I think that's going to really change the tactic of that primary officer, probably just waiting for more backup before they pull up closer, uh, uh, closer, to, closer behind her, I should say, Colleen, uh, here on Peck Road. She is now in rush hour traffic along Peck Road, and now you see that primary unit only a few car lengths behind, lights and sirens blaring, Night Sun overhead, CHP now desperate to get her off the road. Another red light through the red. Through the red, light just turned green. Now that uh, two CHP units will uh, go through that intersection with her, and now with two units behind her, we may see an attempt at a pit or if they give the go-ahead, or uh, or something else. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens here, but certainly the pit maneuver is an option if there is a wide open enough stretch of Peck Road. We're not seeing that just yet. You see a lot of traffic uh, ahead of her, but if there's an open stretch and they give the go-ahead at one of these empty intersections, certainly that is an option that they will employ here. You see that primary unit now joined with company here, back up, joining the pursuit, and here's a third unit, a third unit, potentially CHP as well, about to execute a felony stop, at least I think they will try and pull up much closer behind her here. We'll see what happens here in the next few seconds.
getting back on the freeway. It's a transition road uh, back onto the freeway now. It's gonna put her on the 10 freeway. So two black and whites following her onto the 10 freeway off of Pe Peck Road, now onto the uh, westbound side of the 10 freeway. Now, obviously we know the 10 freeway is shut down much further west of here, but we've got about 10 to 15 miles before uh, that comes into play. So we'll see uh, what traffic does here. The eastbound traffic is much heavier on the 10 freeway, but quite frankly, Colleen, once we get closer to downtown, all bets are off because everything was uh, bright red brake lights as we made our way out to the east here. So she'll start to see some slowdowns if she continues westbound on the 10 freeway. Or freeway. But of course, as her luck would have it, right now she's got plenty of pavement at her disposal. Yeah, yeah, she's pushing it now, upwards of 80 miles per hour with really uh, nobody in her way here. She's got uh, those carpool lanes to herself now and she's using them to full advantage. She could go faster, but she's already doing about 80. And now we're gonna see some more aggressive tactics by that primary unit. Not too aggressive because there are still lots of other motorists uh, around her, but uh, we are gonna see some more pressure applied here, I think by CHP, so at night sun has gone away temporarily. I'm not sure if that, yeah, they're still there, uh, just trying to keep it on her. You know, it's so, uh, it, it, by the way, I, I gotta tell you, Colleen, keeping that night sun on the suspect vehicle is much easier, or is much harder, I should say, than it looks on television. Controlling that night sun is really uh, a skill, and it does take uh, a certain amount of talent to, to, to keep that light on a fast-moving truck like this. So you'll occasionally see her dip into the darkness here, but right now they do have the night sun on her. It's providing tremendous assistance to those primary units, but it's also letting the other drivers around her know that something is going on. There is something that they need to be on the lookout for, maybe start bearing to the right as they see those sirens coming up from behind, and certainly they know that something is going on. Of course, in uh, typical LA fashion, it is, of course, a high-speed pursuit. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's a somewhat, I think, a newer model vehicle. It's been through a little wear and tear, but you see uh, she is accelerating here. You know, it always depends, too, if it's a stolen vehicle, uh, the details of that theft matter because it always, of course, depends on how much fuel was in the tank when it was stolen, uh, but it also depends on when it was stolen. Has she been driving the stolen vehicle around town for the past few days, for a week? Has it been stolen for a while? Or did that theft just happen this afternoon? We just don't know the answer to those questions. Presumably, law enforcement may have more details than we do. Certainly, it's simple enough to run the plates and find out uh, who the proper owner of the vehicle is and what the uh, situation is. But in any event, you now see two primary units, a primary unit and a secondary unit, I should say, as well as California Highway Patrol's helicopter pursuing from above there. So a uh, very, very uh, precarious situation around all of this other traffic here on the 10 freeway. And again, it's worth reiterating, the further west we go, she will eventually run into a detour, which we are well aware of.
Yeah, and it also makes you wonder, you know, it, this all started in East L.A. This has turned into basically a joyride, Colleen, to take it all the way out into, you know, out to the 605 and play those games in El Monte, trying to, you know, run from CHP up there on Peck Road and only to get back on the 10 freeway of all freeways to head back towards downtown. It just tells you that there is no real clear destination in mind here. My money says that she is enjoying her last few miles of freedom here until uh, that truck does indeed run out of gas and she starts to look for an opportunity to either give herself up peacefully or try and dump the vehicle some other way. It certainly is evident that she may look for an opportunity to run considering that she came to a very long pregnant pause under that freeway earlier you got the impression that she was thinking about maybe getting out, dumping the vehicle. I was looking for her to come out on foot on the other side of that overpass, but she just crept along and managed to stay in the vehicle and continued the pursuit. And so, you know, we'll see what's going through her mind. You never know what's going through somebody's mind in a case like this. Are they under the influence? Are there other factors at play here? How desperate is the individual? And of course, the big question is if there are any other crimes associated, is this person armed or is it only the truck that those officers are concerned with? They treat all these suspects as if they're possibly armed, of course, but do they have any intel telling them otherwise? Do they know uh, if there were other weapons used in a previous crime? Was this a carjacking? Again, questions we just don't know the answer to yet. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's one of those two, presumably. She does not want to uh, give herself up here. Now we have a third unit uh, joining the pursuit. Uh, that's going to give them more options. But you're right. It really is one of those two things. Most likely, either there's another crime here that she's running from or potentially in, in, the, in, in a uh, not-so-great state of mind. And, and, and that could be uh, why she's refusing to pull over here. If she's experienced at this, she may know. You know if she, uh, in other words, if she's a career criminal, for example, I'm not saying she is, but if she is, then, uh, you know, she knows the drill. She knows what's awaiting her, uh, which could be a night in jail. But then again, it might not even be a night in jail. It may be a few hours in jail, and she could be right back on the street. So she doesn't see the need to pull over right away. She's, she's calculating her risk, and she thinks maybe, well, maybe it's worth taking her chances. Maybe she can get away and avoid the arrest altogether. Already, worth reiterating, LAPD was willing enough to let this go. She tested their patience. Now she's back in their jurisdiction. So she's taken the 10 freeway back into LAPD's jurisdiction where this began. If she gets off the freeway, LAPD will be involved, and they probably won't be as gentle this time around. They won't be as willing to let her go. But right now, we should say California Highway Patrol, the primary agency here. And now we start to see that heavy, heavy traffic here on the 10 freeway coming to a stop here, or not a stop, but coming to a crawl as bumper to bumper traffic, uh, bumper to bumper traffic as she navigates the East LA interchange. Getting off.
We don't know. We don't know, but she, oh, look at that. She really just picked up speed there. Get off the freeway now on Mission Road at a high rate of speed. Throw up the real-time speed tracker. We see her at uh, 50 miles per hour. She was going much faster a second ago as she tried to outrun that cop at the intersection. Again, CHP, the primary agency here. To answer your question, Colleen, we don't know who else is in the vehicle, but I sense a lot more aggression just in the last few seconds that she got off the freeway. She felt the pressure from all of that traffic. The 10 freeway was at a standstill if she stayed on it. A spike strip was not an option. A pit maneuver was not an option. And so now California Highway Patrol finds themselves back on surface streets as she navigates the uh, L.A. River here. She's over the river at First Street, the First Street Bridge, heading into downtown L.A. Using that shoulder. Yep. Look at this. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's scary because you hear the sirens and you instinctively want to pull over to the right. But she's passing to your right, and so it just increases the risk for more collisions here. Now she's back to their left. They hear the sirens. They're pulling over to the right. You've got three units right behind her here, and she is in another major intersection coming up here at 1st Street and Hewitt Street. That's going to be another red light that she just blew through, those three units. Going through the red with her, lights and sirens on. Pedestrians crossing the street as she makes a wild left southbound turn onto Central Avenue. Now in downtown L.A. where the streets are much narrower, the buildings are much taller, and the pedestrian traffic is much heavier. We will see if they continue this pursuit. If, this, if the speeds continue at this rate, they may let the helicopter do the work here, but right now she is really pushing it down a pretty empty Central Avenue, but you never know when somebody's crossing the street through this part of town. We're just entering Skid Row. Right, so that would be surveillance mode, uh, and that is another possibility. That is an option at their disposal if they just want to not spook the person and take some of the pressure off, but continue to keep an eye on her. Many of these helicopters are equipped with infrared technology, so even though they don't have the night sun on her for our advantage, they still see a very clear image on their screens inside the cockpit of her movements. Uh, California Highway Patrol does have that technology at their disposal. Uh, right now, those three pursuing officers still able to keep a solid visual. Uh, Rob, help me out really quick. Are their lights still on or did they turn them off? I think they're off. So now they're following, they, they backed way off. They're still following, but from a distance. Going the wrong way. Ooh, threading the needle here on Central Avenue, Colleen. This is scary. A lot of rush hour traffic here on a busy Central Avenue. Another intersection finally coming to a stop for the first time. She's behind another patrol car. Look at that. He doesn't even know. That's an LAPD officer. He doesn't even know. He's not even aware, I don't think. Well, uh, here, oh, look, passenger door, passenger door, front and rear door popping open. A passenger stepping out of the vehicle, the driver coming out the other side. We're at Central Avenue and Olympic Boulevard. They have lots of backpacks, a dog, another dog involved in this pursuit. And now CHP is probably, look at this, they're running through traffic with the dog. They're running through traffic with those belongings, dumping the vehicle in the middle of Central Avenue. Now running for it along Olympic Boulevard at Central, continuing now down the sidewalk where we know for a fact law enforcement is close by. We we have helicopters in the air. There are plenty of eyeballs on these two suspects. They will be taken down here one way or another in short order. But that dog, 
as you know, Colleen, is going to come into play here as they uh, approach these two individuals. I suspect they probably would have already done it, but now that decision-making is made all the more complicated by that large dog. Front. Yeah, yeah. No, here they come, here they come. Here come those units, and we will see how this plays out. They're coming up ahead of her. I think they're well aware, I believe. My money, yes, uh, that was the driver. That is the driver. Uh, it looked like, hard to tell, but it looked like a male passenger. Female driver, male passenger, both grabbed their belongings, a couple of pretty hefty backpacks and duffel bags. And uh, I've lost a visual of the passenger, but we're going to stay right behind. Over to the left, Rob, I think he's in front of the, she's in front of the truck. Is she under the tree? Under the tree. Okay, behind the truck, under the tree. Behind the truck, under the tree with the dog. Here comes CHP. They're in front of her, and I don't have a good here. Is that an officer? I can't tell. That's the girl. Okay, that's the girl. She's on the phone. There's the dog. Passenger and driver together with the dog behind that truck. Here comes another black and white under the tree here. We people with their guns drawn. No, no guns. Oh, here's the gun. Okay, weapons out, pointed directly at those suspects. And now we'll, we'll try and get a better vantage point underneath this tree. They're running, they're running. Running without the dog. Running without the dog, two officers in foot pursuit through traffic here on Olympic Boulevard, a very busy Olympic Boulevard, a city bus right there, and now she's being taken down to the ground. Look at this, the driver being taken out of the ground by two officers, and we still have to look out for that passenger and the dog as soon as we, okay, she's detained. Let's go ahead and just tilt up and see if we have any other activity behind that truck. I suspect they may have caught up with him as well. Uh, it was right near that tree in front of the truck, I'm not sure if there were enough units to converge there. Only those two patrol cars, and they may not have, uh, the cops have the dog. An officer with the dog, for sure, okay. It, we believe, so we can, yeah. There is the, passenger oh it's the passenger without the okay we thought it was an officer okay it was a this is the passenger another female is that a female it's another female so two females this is the passenger she, she yeah sorry yeah a little bit of confusion up here that is the passenger with the dog she's now on the phone and now those two patrol cars are right next to her so presumably she may be willing to give up. Something tells me she may have had enough and she is ready and willing to give herself up here. I mean, she, she has plenty of opportunity to walk away. Uh, I mean, she now she's walking away. Well, it's also worth mentioning, we don't know if that person was being held against their will, if they were a willing participant in that pursuit. Uh, those, those variables matter as well. But now she is indeed walking away from the scene here. Uh, police are making their way over here. Uh, not quite fast enough, but they are making their way over here. I can confirm that there are officers making their way back over to this area. Uh, do you see them, Rob? I don't. Uh, yeah, it's, so somebody's near that patrol car. That would be one of the officers who will likely make their way down the sidewalk here. 
She appears to be relatively composed here with the dog, just kind of standing by and ready to cooperate. She appears willing to cooperate. Uh, she is guilty by association. However, she has not committed any crimes that we have seen. This is, again, the passenger in that pursuit. It's possible. Yeah, you mean just let the passenger go. It's possible. It's possible. We heard we heard them we heard them making their way over towards her on the radio, but they have had plenty of opportunity now and I have not seen any officers as she approaches Central and Olympic again. Uh, those two officers are are staying put with the driver and uh, that would uh, coincide with with what you were saying, Colleen. Yeah. They don't, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of other factors here. We don't, and we, and we just don't know. We don't know, for example, is that stolen property that she's carrying? Are there any other crimes associated with this? Now, you would think by now they would have already approached her. We are told that they were trying to, but in any event, you can see her now sheltering at this McDonald's, just kind of waiting by. We still hear them on the radio trying to find their way over towards her. Here's an LAPD unit now turning the lights and sirens on in front of the McDonald's, and maybe they are, maybe they're going to try and approach her now. We're going to stick with this because I feel like she's going to cooperate, but I do think they do want to talk to her at the very least. Uh, you're right, she hasn't committed any major crimes that we are aware of as a passenger. She is not the driver that was breaking all those road rules. However, she still uh, is a witness to all of this. And uh, even if an arrest on her part is just more paperwork for those officers, she still has information at the very least to provide and help them prosecute the case against the driver. So they've got to find out at least what the situation is if they can. Uh, and, you know, even the dog. We don't even know if that's her dog, even. I mean, we really don't know. Most likely, most likely her pit bull, but, yeah. Here they come, LAPD, now pulling up next to her. They're going to approach, and she's going to drop the leash. Did she drop the, she did drop the leash for a second. This is, this is, this is delicate. Let's hope she cooperates here. You see there, they don't need, they haven't even drawn their weapons yet. So that shows you we're back into another situation not dissimilar to the pursuit last week up in Ventura County where there was a large dog uh, that they had to negotiate with. Now it's a pit bull who is standing right next to what appears to be the owner, we are presuming, and those officers trying to negotiate. There are, there are weapons drawn, but they're approaching delicately, and now she's walking away. This is not good. This is not good because now they can't see her hands. Um, this is not. This is not good. I, I. I. I don't. Okay, tie it up to the pole. Maybe they're asking her to do that, or maybe she's volunteering to do that. 
Yeah. Again. And they may just talk to her. They may not even execute an arrest. They may just take her in for questioning temporarily and see what her involvement is. Uh, unlikely, but in any event, you know, it's just you just don't know. You just you just don't know because the fact of the matter is now, uh, if she is taken in, now they have to call animal control or a relative and uh, and handle and handle the animal. So at least the dog is safely tied up to the pole, and uh, they can now talk to the owner and figure out the rest. Yeah. Right, yeah, <laughs> it's good analogy. Potentially, I think you might you might be right here. Um, again, they may just talk to her as long as she's cooperating and has a a reasonable story, I guess you'd say. But uh, you know, I, it's it's not lost upon these officers though that these two, especially the driver, albeit, but these two put a lot of lives in danger uh, over the course of this pursuit here. So this is not something that should be taken lightly, and they certainly uh, don't want to make the wrong example out of them either. It's, it's not uh, not the best practice to let suspects go, especially on live television, uh, dare I say, but it's definitely something that requires some follow through, even if I said, as I said, even if it's just collecting a witness statement and uh, giving her a, uh, a citation uh, to appear in court, it could be as simple as that. Yep, a lot of resources dedicated. Uh, you know, they, they, again, they, they want to get to the bottom of this. They, it was their pursuit to begin with. Now you have California Highway Patrol handling the driver over here, but this is a, a mutual effort between LAPD and California Highway Patrol. Plenty of paperwork for both agencies to complete tonight, and eventually they will sort this out and decide to hand this over to a prosecutor at some point. Now, uh, what the future holds for her is quite honestly an open question. Does she spend the night in jail or is she basically released in short order? That is, it's, it really is an open question and it's part of what motivates some of these folks who refuse to pull over for law enforcement. You got it. You got it. That's true. And it, 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 might, it might only be my fourth pursuit with a dog. <laughs> Good to know. Are you a dog person? Good to know. It's terrible. Yeah, it is terrifying.